So there was there was distinctive parts about Jesus, wasn't there? His voice. The way he broke the bread. There still is. There still is. You, you, you don't find you don't find him even approaching you the same way. No. He speaks to you one way. <coughs> Excuse me. And then he appears in another. He speaks to you one in manner, and then he appears another. In my years of relationship with Christ, I've never found him to be common. He's always very peculiar, very moving. I think, I think, well, I, I, I heard him that way that time. But I, he speaks again in a little peculiar way. But you always know it's him. You always know. It's him. No one else like that. No one else resembles him. His relationship with you is different than any other relationship. <coughs> so, all right. Any other comments, Brother right? Pete? Uh, Brother Moses, that proves that the book of Revelation it was revealed by God through Christ. And he was the true who reveals everything through John. But it wasn't really John no. who received it, but it was Christ himself. Yeah. No, it wasn't John. No. John only, it, it, he signified it by his angel to the servant John. Now, what it, he just gave it to John to write. He signified it. He made it certain. The revelation of Jesus Christ, right. which God gave unto him right. and sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John. John just was writing. Yeah. He, he really, that's all. He was a vessel. Mm -hmm. God chose John like he chose Mary to bear his son. He chose John to end the holy book with a holy revelation and put the cap sheet on the plan of God mm -hmm. for a man. So uh, that, that's, that's right with him. Right? For now, you can take, and, and, and the, the description of Christ that John sees is beautiful. It, it's so, uh, it's so, it just is beyond, it's just that. <coughs> A garment down to the foot, verse 13, and girt about the breast with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. <laughs> and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as they burned, if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Many waters. Can you imagine waters? Just picture the gulf rolling in. And his voice coming. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. <laughs> and he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp, twisted sword, and his countenance was as the sun shining in his strength. In his strength. This is just a descriptive. Uh, appearance of Christ as he appeared to John. And John was writing this, describing this Christ as he saw him. Of course, he did not have a literal seven stars in his hand. He quickly gives us the understanding of that in the second chapter. These seven stars are seven ministers of the church, are seven angels. I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt you and stop Praise this carry on here with Praise my call. God. Um, Praise his wonderful name. Daniel saw what? him also. I understand. Pardon me? Daniel saw him also. Yes, Sister Marley, you have 
something in Daniel? Ten five. Ten five. You want to read it? I, I'll have you turn there. They can put it on the screen. There it is. Daniel ten and five. Let's stare now. Then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man, clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of a pass. His body also was like the barrel, that is, that precious stone, and his face as the appearance of lightning. Praise God. And his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like color to polish brass. Polish and the brass. voice of his words, like the voice of the multitude. What a description. And yet, you and I will not know what he really looks like. <laughs> till we see him <laughs> as he is. John, the, gospel, the first the book of John, the third chapter said, yeah. what love the Father has bestowed upon us. We should be called the sons of God. And the, you know, not going to get a fear what we shall be. But we know when he appears. Praise we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So when he appears, and every man that has this hope in him purifies himself. Every man that has this hope in himself purifies himself, even as God himself. Praise God, hallelujah! Now, in verse 19 of the first chapter of Revelation. John, writing the words which Christ is speaking. In verse 18, he said, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Yes. Amen. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. <coughs> the understanding of hell and of death. I'm going to substitute a word for hell there. Because the two keys that you need him to unlock for you, and I do, is the key. It would be the keys of life and death. In life, the word hell is depicted. Hell simply means confusion, fear, torment. That is not after you die. It is while you're living that you deal with fear, confusion, and torment. I'm glad the Lord opened my eyes to that, that uh, God is not roasting, toasting human beings in a nether world called the grave in torment, in fire, in persecution, they deal with that here. Life is from God, and life delivers them from hell. Because Jesus gives us the understanding or the key of hell and death, of death and of hell, of death. Death has no fear for me. It shouldn't for you. If you're serving the Lord, walking with God, giving your life to Christ, why would you fear death? Death is a momentary experience. When you go from the consciousness of mortal flesh, body, however you go, to the immortal state of resurrection. And you are living again. Oh, I fear a long, dark silence that I know nothing. There's no such thing as a long, dark, dark silence. silence. You will die physically. Don't fear it if you're serving Christ. And immediately, the resurrection is there. Uh, but it could be 10 years, it could be 20 years. 
uh, between my life here and my life there and the resurrection. You wouldn't know if it's thousands of years. <laughs> when you awake in the morning, do you, what, you awake? <laughs> the night is past. So when said, oh, I had a long night. You were, you were conscious if you had a long night. You couldn't have possibly been sleeping and had a long night. Because you know no time. There's no time. So when you're sleeping, in death of the physical body, there's nothing to fear because you're going to be translated from that state into the state of the resurrection and come forth. But what if I come forth? What if I come forth um, wrong? Well, get right before you die. Don't wait till you die and hope that the grave changes you. It won't happen. It will change nothing while you're living. The living shall praise God. Praise God. The living. Yes. Here's where we get ready. So he said, uh, I'm he that liveth and was dead. Behold, alive forevermore, and I have the keys of hell and death. Write the things which thou hast seen. All right? Write about what you've seen. What did John see? He saw Jesus and the seven golden candlesticks. That's what he saw. That's what he saw. He said, now write that which you've seen and the things which are and the things that were was the seven churches of Asia. Write that. Put that down. And then the things which are hereafter. So John finishes up writing the first four chapters, concludes the seven churches of Asia and their judgment. And in the fifth chapter, he starts writing the things which are hereafter and describing the future. From the time John wrote the book of Revelation some 2,000 years ago to this very time and to the coming of Christ and the end of the 6,000 years of man. Okay? Any questions, Brother Pete? Uh, chapter 20 in there, Brother Marlowe said, so you know, that the seven stars are the angels of the seven church. I understand that, but... The seven lampstand which you saw at the seven churches. What does he mean with that? Where are you reading from now? You're in the 20. The 20, the, the latter part of verse 20. Oh, yes, the last verse. Um, the mystery of the seven stars. Where did you see the seven stars? In the hand of Jesus. Yeah. And the seven golden candlesticks. Where did you see the candlesticks? He saw them, and then he saw the Son of Man in the midst of them. All right? This is the mystery. What are they? The seven stars are the seven, or are the angels, messengers, ministers, pastors, teachers, prophets, evangelists, of the seven churches. And this is the mystery now. I'm explaining the mystery. And he said, And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. So here he sees the seven candlesticks, Jesus in the midst of them. He sees the seven stars of the seven messengers. The mystery of what are that would be John reveals it or Christ reveals it through John he said the mystery was a mystery until it was revealed a mystery is only until it's revealed the mystery what's behind that door there simply is revealed when you open that door 
and go in that room is no longer a mystery. The mystery of anything is until the wrapping, the concealment, the containment, the fabric around it that hides it, conceals it, is pulled apart. And so the veil.